Wow, isn't God just so amazing? What he does in our lives is just incredible. The transforming work of the Holy Spirit. So anyway, I was given, as part of our series in Thessalonians, a question. What makes a Christian stand out? I was immediately transported back to my childhood as the youngest of three siblings in a very warm, caring, Christian environment. However, it was very strict. Some of you may have had similar upbringings. Um, And there were many things that we could and couldn't do. So, for instance, I could go for, for a walk on a Sunday, but I wasn't allowed to go on the swings or play with my friends up at the park. I could only read Christian books on a Sunday and do a nice quiet activity like Bible Fuzzy Felt. Ask me afterwards if you don't remember that. (laughs) And this was in addition to, on our Sunday, we had the breaking of bread service in the morning, the Sunday school in the afternoon, the gospel service in the evening, and then when I was a bit older, it was youth club after that. So there was an awful lot of things that, you know... I wasn't allowed to do, and then I had to do. And then as I grew older, um, I wasn't allowed to go to discos. Um, There was a film around at the time called The Love Bug. It was only a U film about a VW car, but my parents decided this was not the right thing for us, so we couldn't go to that. And um, my sister wanted to go to the bowling alley, and my dad told her it was a den of iniquity. So... As an aside, he ran a boys' club at the church, and a few years later, he took them and realised, actually, it wasn't a den of iniquity. So the reason that we were given for not being able to do these things was because they were worldly, and as Christians, we shouldn't be doing these things. However, um, although I believed in God, I never stopped believing in him, but I felt that the Christian walk was very boring and it was impossible to have fun. And unfortunately, as a result of this, I became rather deceitful as a teenager, which had a few interesting outcomes. Not all good, I can tell you. So fast forward a few years, when I was married with young children, I was at Stonely Bible Week and this uh, man was preaching, I can't remember who it was, on spinning plates and the Christian life. And on the stage, he had a load of sticks, poles, and he said, okay, I've become a Christian, what must I do now? And he set a plate spinning, saying, okay, I've got to pray. And then he set another one going, what have I got to do now? Oh, I've got to read my Bible. And oh, I've got to witness to someone. I've got to go to church, Um, and so on and so forth. And as you can imagine, he was madly running about the stage trying to keep all of these uh, plates spinning. And of course, they started to drop, which of course signified the dropping of certain aspects of our Christian walk. So why am I telling you this? Well, remember back to me as a child, there were loads of things that I couldn't do, I shouldn't do. Now there were loads of things as a Christian I should be doing. Everything was such an effort, not the abundant and free life the Bible promised. How I was missing at the point. What makes a Christian stand out really is not about what we should or shouldn't be doing, although of course that's important, but it's about who we are. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. So what does that mean? Sorry, I will get to our text in a minute. (laughs) Bear with me. So that doesn't really tell me how I should be standing out. Well, when we become a Christian, we're saying, I believe in you, God. Thank you for giving your life for me and for giving all my sins. And I want you in my life. 
You loved me first. Hallelujah. And I don't want to only love you more. I want to get to know you more. And I want to become like your son, Jesus. When we ask God to fill us with his Holy Spirit, he does. And that's when the transformation begins. From the inside out. It is not from the outside in. There is nothing that we can do, say, think, whatever, that is going to make us a good Christian or a better Christian. We are loved and accepted just as we are. I'm going to say that again, everybody. You are loved and accepted just the way you are. And as the Holy Spirit begins to work in us, we then love him more. So things like reading the Bible, praying, coming along to church, being in a part of a small group, all of those things are not something that we should do. It becomes an intrinsic part of who we are and our way of life. And it's, it's just something that we want to do. We look at how all the things that God has done for us, all that he's given us, how much he loves us, and our lives begin to change. And the Bible shows that our lives change and we begin to stand out in the things that we do, how we speak, how we act, and we do it out of love, not obligation. So I'm going to get going now on my talk, sorry. So this hopefully gives a bit of background as to why Christians stand out, but what makes us stand out? So can we have today's passage, please? So I'm reading from the NIV, and I did make it very clear that I really wanted the NIV because one of my main points isn't mentioned in the ESV. So um, I'm going to be reading from 1 Thessalonians 2, and I'm starting at verse 5 to verse 12. You know, we never used flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, nor from you or anyone else, even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you, just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are our witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. As you can see, there is so much in this passage, and um, there's no way I can pick it all out. So coming back to my original question of what makes Christians stand out, I thought I would focus on three different aspects of this in the text. Our heart and intentions, our speech and actions, and finally, our response to God. So firstly, our intentions. I had my 60th this year, whoop, whoop. and my lovely husband, Mal, made a surprise weekend away for me, which I was really looking forward to. I had no idea where we were going, And um, I was a bit surprised when we arrived at Centre Parks because that's a place that we usually go as a family. (laughs) Nevertheless, I was very happy and I was looking forward to perhaps going to the spa and going on bikes and all that sort of stuff. Just nice us time. Well, he was really in a rush and I just didn't understand this. He was striding on ahead of me into the main centre in the weather main reception and up to the restaurants and you can imagine my surprise when I suddenly saw a table in the restaurant absolutely faced with a whole table of this. (laughs) Okay, I was totally taken aback being faced by a dozen or so of this face 
Um, and it took a while to process that the mask was actually a contorted me. And the cogs eventually turned to work out it was my family. So I'm sure you get this. Masks hide the real identities. They are deceptive. And Paul uses this illustration to stress the point about being open and genuine and not covering up greed. Perhaps at this point, we may need to ask some questions of ourselves. Have I put on a mask saying or doing what I think others are expecting of me? Am I actually covering up a hidden agenda? Have mixed motives or hiding the real me? Paul tells us that God was his witness to being sincere and true. And we need to remember that God knows the real us as well. He reinforces his point by saying that he didn't flatter or look for praise from anyone. So what's our intention when we do something? Are we looking for recognition? Are we acting out of a heart of love? or wanting praise in order to be affirmed or thought well of. Paul is, in essence, telling us we don't need to be affirmed by people or receive their praise, even though Facebook, Instagram, and other social media tells us otherwise. God loves us, as I've already said, just the way we are, with an everlasting love, and our identity is found in him. Okay, moving on to my second aspect, our speech and uh, actions. Did you pick up on the language that Paul uses all the way through the text? It's so honest, warm, full of love and encouragement. He doesn't flatter or speak insincerely, but likens his actions to that of a mother, gentle and caring for her little children, and of a father, encouraging and comforting. He speaks with affection rather than authority. I love the way that the message translates verse 11 and 12. You saw with your own eyes how discreet and courteous we were among you, with keen sensitivity to you as fellow believers. And God knows we weren't freeloaders. You experienced it all firsthand. With each of you, we were like a father with his child, holding your hand, whispering encouragement, showing you step by step how to live well before God. Wow, that's a challenge, isn't it? Are you, am I sincere, gentle, encouraging in our speech? Or are we gossipy, judgmental, or disrespectful when talking to or about others? Remember, we are a new creation We've already heard from Ephesians. I'd like to quote again from Ephesians 4, verse 22 to 24. It says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on that new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So as our minds and beings are transformed, we begin to stand out as different. We will give the word of encouragement to a mum or a dad or anyone for that matter. Perhaps offer to babysit, give them a bit of space. We will be willing to have our day interrupted to help or support those in need. We will be truthful in our workplace or school, and not join in any unkind banter. And out of our love for him, we will be bold to share the gospel of Jesus with those around, and yet know that he will not love us any less if we shy away. And this doesn't mean that we puff ourselves up, you know, as holy Joes, sorry Joe, wherever you are, to give the impression of being better than others, but we act with humility and love. And as Galatians 5, and 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So my last 
point of what makes us stand out as a Christian is our response to God. This is an individual response, as Paul writes in verse 11, for you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his children. Each of you, each one of us. Paul reminds them of how holy, righteous and blameless he and his companions were. They, we, belong to God. We are his and therefore we are his witnesses. He actually called us as individuals into his kingdom and glory. Isn't that something that fills you with joy? I think it's wonderful. He's called me. He's actually called me his own. And in Isaiah 43 verse 1 says, But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, or Jane, or Pete, or whoever, he who formed you, O Israel, Will, Winnie, Dan, Fear not, for I've redeemed you. I've called you by name, and you are mine. Therefore, as Paul urged the Thessalonians, we too are urged with his Father's love to live lives worthy of his calling. I want to ask you, are you in love with Jesus? May we stand out as Christians not in rigid, legalistic shoulds and should nots of intention, words and actions, but of who we are, whose we are, in love with Jesus, responding to him as he transforms our lives with the power of his Holy Spirit to witness for him and impact those around. Um, could the band come up? And I'd like just to finish, if that's okay. Uh, with Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. So this is my prayer, that your love will flourish and that you will not only love much, but well. Learn to love appropriately. You need to use your head and test your feelings so that your love is sincere and intelligent, not sentimental gush. Live a lover's life circumspect and exemplary, a life Jesus will be proud of, bountiful in fruits from the soul, making Jesus Christ attractive to all, getting everyone involved in the glory and praise of God. Amen.